Hi, I'm Andy Fickman, the director of She's the Man, and we're getting ready to show you the making of She's the Man, so you can see how it all comes together through movie magic. And action. The script actually came from Jack Leslie. Jack runs our, is the president of our company, and um, in his spare time, uh, he wrote the script he updated, Twelfth Night, and set it in high school. In case it didn't sell or everybody just thought this is the worst script we've ever read, I used a, a fake name. Most guys would never admit that. Uh, but three days later he said, well, you know, that script, because he didn't put his real name on it. He said, I wrote that script and Amanda Bynes is attached. I was like, great. Easiest project I've ever developed, ever. It was called Dude Looks Like a Lady. The first time I read the script, I laughed out loud. I thought there were a lot of funny moments, and I was excited because I thought it would be a great opportunity to play two different characters in one movie. I'm gonna act like a girl, and you're gonna talk to me, okay? Ew, do, do I have to? I think there's definitely a girl power element to it. And in Jack's original script, she had gone to school to prove she could play Hamlet in a play. That's why she dressed herself as a boy. But with this, with the whole soccer thing, proving that she could play on a boy's team gave it a little bit more of, I guess, that female empowerment. I read the script and I absolutely loved it. I think from the very beginning, we all saw the exact same movie. So it made my job very easy. He came in, he had great ideas, how to cast it, how to shoot the soccer. That's how a real director works. <laughs> and he comes in with notebooks of what he wants the movie to look like, what he wants the characters to look like, and has just such a great, big personality. He's, I describe him sort of as a camp counselor in a way. For the lovely Amanda Bynes, right here. It's Amanda, not really working on her soccer right now. She's just talking on the phone. She does that all the time. Bye, Dad. I knew so much about her uh, because my son, uh, who's eight, Austin, has watched Amanda. So I was actually wildly familiar with all of her work and had always thought that she stood out um, for her comedic timing. We went to have lunch. At the Ivy in LA, and it sounds so Hollywood, but Andy and I are like the least Hollywood people we went there and we were like excited to see you know celebrities and everything but more than anything we just spent two hours just we couldn't stop talking we connected within two seconds to this day we've never lost that amanda was very involved in the whole process very early on we wanted her to be sort of there to sign to be on the other side of of the table uh, see faces as they were coming in she is certainly a good eye for actors if one of the actors is there you can actually you know, work off of someone. Why not meet them early and find out who you have the best chemistry with? The hotel's across the street. Andy does like rehearsal, very much. So he had two weeks of rehearsal. Because I come out of theater, I'm obsessed with having a theater ensemble whenever I do a, a film. I, I want it to be the same experience. I want the actors to bond and have a great time. And There's something exciting about working with someone who, who is so talented in his own right just because it makes you want to be better. All right, let's do it again. Kind of was a taskmaster uh, because a lot of the actors were new. And what he did was he showed them Tootsie and, you know, a movies of this theme. We did a lot of stuff that was like, we went to the amusement parks. We were probably having dinner and lunch together every single day. We saw movies every day. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah baby. Nice. Like a lot of tears. <laughs> I beat people. It wasn't anyway. wet enough, we're gonna do it again. <laughs> <laughs> it looks perfect. I have a taser gun. It's a method, I don't know if, it, if a lot of other directors use it, but you can actually be in your uh, director's chair and you can taser someone from a distance if they get the line wrong or something like that. He is so brilliant and he is just, he's in himself like a comedic genius. We're here at the prom. Okay, guys. Uh, Hi, Mom. And I bought her this beautiful prom dress. It's not the best prom, is it? It's not so good on the prom. I love improv a lot. And the magic of David Cross um, is that he would just, we would kind of go to town with him. I don't know who the director is. I get phone calls, and then I just get uh, direction from the director who likes to remain hidden. We're not allowed to meet him. I'm assuming it's him. <laughs>
<laughs> well, I, I think I'm the guilty party here because, uh, uh, yes, there is a take in which David Cross delivers the line is written. And usually I would say, like, pretty much, you know, where we're going with this, have some fun. And I find that when an actor is really uh, deeply in their character, their character can speak so much better than sometimes we can when we're sitting at a typewriter in Los Angeles. Bon appetit. I made the labels myself. That one's good. There you go. Have a great apple and sandwich. The last 17 movies I've done and TV shows have all been on AstroTurf, and as you can see, this is a really lush green. I don't know if you can get a shot of this, or it's in the background, but get a little close. That is beautiful, beautiful British Columbia turf. Vancouver's weather is an unpredictable mistress. There is a beachfront there in Vancouver, um, and the two days that we were there filming, um, we had done a rehearsal there, which was great, and everyone was all excited. All the girls were wearing tiny bikinis, and the boys were wearing little trunks, and it was so, it was the coldest day in June in the history of Vancouver. Meanwhile, I'm in like a, you know, a parka, and we're all like, like we're up in Antarctica underneath there having people serve us like mochas as we're bird chilling. We <laughs> look out, there's hundreds of extras who we have to drop the blanket and run around and, you know, beach blanket bingo sort of. I'm in my bikini and you have to keep reminding them, you're not miserable, you're happy. And they were all like, yeah, I hate you. Um, and still Amanda and them had to play soccer. And so it was, it was we, we ended up with great stuff and great footage, but it was a real challenge. In post-production, we actually had to blue the sky a little bit because it was just the dreariest day you've ever seen. Also, we sort of set it in Stratford Anywhere, USA. And Vancouver gives you a lot of looks and a lot of feels. That's sort of a timeless area. <laughs> Uh, you got me. <laughs> Where's the soccer fit in? That's crazy. I have no idea. Soccer is the world's favorite sport. And he really wanted to get the camera in there. Shoot it like football was shot in Friday Night Lights or um, any given Sunday. The game plan was let's shoot soccer and make it sort of really cool and really tough and not shortchange the action of it. We met Soccer Dan in Mecca, Soccer Dan. Nike Coach of the Year. Dan had so much energy. He and I had a, a, a similar vision for the film, which was important because he becomes your, you know, he becomes your choreographer. The hardest thing about doing a sports film is, you know, the ball needs to connect to the foot. It needs to do, if I want it to go over there, can we, is that gonna happen? And what's your guesstimate of how many times it will take for it to do exactly that? Make a diagonal across here, and as those guys come in this way, make a diagonal back behind them out there again. We have to decide what are the important points to be able to sell the whole story that happened on the soccer field. And then within that, I'll design plays that allow the soccer ball either to hit the point they want to make, or the soccer ball's going past the action, the way the actors are actually acting within the soccer game, so that it's exciting and interesting for the audience to be able to watch. <laughs> I think it's been tremendous casting from, you know, Andy and deciding and Lauren who's going to come in and play the roles because they really did pick athletes on the guy's side that just have this innate ability. Soccer Dan, oh my God, I don't, he was, he's just a genius, like when it comes to sports and soccer and he made me feel really comfortable. I played soccer before, but not on this level. Channing's a stud, that's all I can say about the guy. I would like to say on here that I did beat him by two seconds in our fitness race and he would have to back that up, Channing. That's all him doing his own stuff. At one point we thought we'd need a, a stunt double and a soccer double. Ain't nothing to it. He is all out there. I'm phys pretty physically fit, but first day of soccer I was dead. <laughs> I was so dead because you never stop running. They taught me some few tricks. I get to do a, a bicycle kick and uh, some other stuff that I brought over from playing soccer, like some flip throws and, and stuff like that. I'm Ninja! Ninja Gold! I'm a ninja goal, pure Robert Hoffman. Out of control. He's out of his friggin' mind. Soccer. Yep. All right. He almost took my face out on the last one. He did a backflip right and his foot, like, I felt it brush my right. ear hair. I had a little bit of fuzz on my ear, and then his foot touched that. We decided to make him a goalkeeper in the movie because of his athletic ability and his dance ability. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.
he'd be able to make the diving saves that goalkeepers would make and make them look really dramatic. But diving is not easy to get used to. That's the one thing that I've had the biggest problem with is that as a goalie, you, no matter where the ball is, how close or far, you have to dive and it hurts. And I got big bruises that look like a, a map of North America on either hip. Because all I do all day is dive and fall and dive and fall. Come on! Just a real moment where Amanda bit it and fell. And then, of course, like I was saying about that, that moment made me laugh so hard that it had to stay. I hope it was funny. Amanda takes a fall like that. There's nothing other than her continuing on with the scene and then wanting to race back to the, the monitor and for her to enjoy what, what we saw. And we had a couple of moments like that. <laughs> Well, if we're all laughing, then it's funny. Let's move on. And Channing, he let loose. And scenes like in the uh, weight room. <laughs> yeah. Or in the tarantula scene. <laughs> I love physical comedy. And I think um, I need partners when I do it. Amanda's like Gilda Ratner. I mean, Amanda would go and play in any scenario. Yes. The big cat fight between Alex and Laura and Amanda uh, just got so much bigger than I think anyone ever anticipated. Alex and Laura and I were so excited to actually physically fight each other. As, as long as Andy laughed and Andy liked it, I was like, okay, he's laughing, that's good. <laughs> that's, I think I'm doing something right. And we're in these gorgeous dresses. I'm wearing like a Versace white dress. And you know, we have these stunt girls teaching us how to like, you know, what's the best way to jump on each other and what's the best way to like pull each other's hair and we went for it and it was so much fun and I was sad I didn't get to do more because it's m mainly between both of the girls. As much as we had our, our three wonderful stunt actresses there too, pretty much when you see the cut of the movie, it's, <laughs> it's a lot of our girls pounding each other. <laughs> Every day, they, there was a tremendous amount of work while at the same time in the morning usually, they'd have hours of soccer practice. I was like, oh easy, you know, I'll, you know, I'll just kick the ball around, it'll be fine. And I was like, boo, and you know, I kicked it and it would like go, you know, like that much. And so, you know, I trained for it. I definitely, you know, I got much stronger in my legs and I was able to kick the ball hard. And when I watched the movie, because all the muscle is gone now, when I watched the movie, I was like, what? Oh, look at my leg muscle. I was sort of impressed. Now, rest for a second. You're getting too aggressive, your man, you. I like it. <laughs> she's become excellent. I've been more than impressed at how quickly she's got it. And it was hard. We ran through the ropes that are like, it's like a ladder. And we did, you know, like head butting. It was hard, but it was so much fun. It was like great. It was great exercise and we all had fun. Do you guys know about pinging? I don't know what you're talking about. Ping what? Ping? Yes, I am part of the ping process. Ping like what, the golf thing? How did you hear about the ping process? I guess it's a soccer tradition. If you hear someone's gonna get pinged, just cover up real fast. Tip of the day, Robert Hoffman, here to inform. When I watch the movie, I'm just so proud of it and proud of what we accomplished and proud of what, that we stuck to our guns, that there were things that Amanda and I talked about at that first meeting that we wanted to have, both on screen and off screen. And I can look back and feel like, you know what, we did that. We did exactly what we set out to do and we just want to promote romance and good times and, you know. Shirtless, sensitive boy. <laughs> we really like that. We just stay tight the whole time and I think it comes off on the screen. I think by the end, uh, it was hard for, I think, a lot of the cast to see it sort of come to an end, um, uh, which is probably explains why so many of them blew their lines all the time, which I realized later was just because they wanted it to just go on and on and on. I'm so proud of him, you know? Like, it was such a great experience, and I love, I love that attitude, and I just had a great time doing the whole movie. And scene.